This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Tom, appreciate you joining us as always. I know we didn't get a chance to talk to Sam Pittman yesterday like it is a custom during the season. He's got a lot on his plate. Offensive coordinator hire. Guys leaving the team. Guys he's trying to bring into the team. NIL stuff. In your opinion, as we bring you into the program this morning, what do you think needs to be his biggest priority that he puts at the top of his schedule this week? Yeah, good morning, guys. Always a pleasure to be with you. Um, I'm, I think you got a lot of stuff happening all at once. I, I mean, I, I think everything maybe falls from the offensive coordinator higher, but the player interviews are necessarily have to start right away. And so I think we'll hear more on the offensive coordinator as the week develops. But these player interviews are a big deal. And um, uh, I think – I think players want to hear what Sam Pittman's vision is for moving forward, uh, what what the staff personnel is going to look like, what those players envision is, is their place on the team. Um, and quite frankly, I mean, NIL money is always going to be a thing. So uh, a lot happening all at once. And then, um, you know, you hire an offensive coordinator and then are there any staff de- decisions that fall from that? And then, you know, maybe there's a second round of players considering what they want to do. So a lot going on all at once, and that's the nature of college football right now. Um, <clears throat> they don't have a bowl game to prepare for or, you know, a, a conference championship game to prepare for nor a bowl. So it can all be about um, staff and roster building here in the next few weeks. I know a lot of people want to hear from Coach Pittman either at the end of the next week or end of this week or next week. But I want to hear from you what you think about Chris Poupal entering the portal. It's an energetic guy, brought the wood at times on defense. Him and his father, very complimentary of Coach Pittman. Were you surprised as I was to see him enter the portal and make that announcement yesterday? Yes, absolutely. A little bit surprised there uh, because I always had great um, respect for Chris Paul. Um, he he redshirted and, and then his – Richard freshman year, he's playing behind um, Bumper Pool and Drew Sanders, and he's still got, I want to say, in the 60s, maybe 62 tackles. He had four sacks, and this is the third linebacker on that team. And he was always so complimentary of learning from those two guys and, you know, not complaining about his playing time that season. And I really felt he had that kind of um, face of the defense kind of approach a coach's son. Uh, I was a little surprised that he wasn't a uh, team captain this year. Um, and I'm certain he would have been in the running had he stayed around for next year. But just a well-spoken kid, you hate to see him go because, you know, not only his production, but what he can do to help keep a defense, you know, tie a defense together, his voice and things like that. So, yeah, it's a big loss. Tom Murphy with us on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Tom, what are you expecting this? I think it's going to be a busy week for you and Bob and everyone that follows and covers the program. I think you're going to have three or four headline uh, stories to write this week. What are you expecting? N- news on the NIL first? Uh, current coaches not being retained? New OC hired? W- what do you think the flow of information is this week? Well, that's a great question, and um, I would say it's anybody's guess. I mean, obviously they've handed around at the NIL, which is important to have out there, much like Mississippi State did when, you know, they're in the midst of hiring a coach. Hey, there's going to be a lot of NIL money infused into this program. And so Arkansas has done the same. Uh, Having that announcement out pretty soon would be to their benefit, obviously, Uh, not only to try to retain players, but to attract ones who are seeking new pastors. And um, unfortunately, Tommy, we uh, we saw this back when NIL first came in. Uh, there was a way that the NCAA or you know the forces that be wanted it to be done, where the players can arrange uh, advertising with people. But yet it's become how much money does that school have, and how's that school going to allot that money? That's really not it was what it was intended to do, and so that's gonna that's gonna be a big deal. And then of course Sam Pittman said last week that. You know, maybe by middle of this week or late this week, 
you know, he can have an offensive coordinator name. So it's all it's all going to be coming at us pretty fast. So we're we're all on high alert, checking with our people to you know see how this thing goes out. Are you expecting some current coaches to be released? I think most of us are. And you know, do you think we'll we'll learn about that uh, when it occurs? I mean, we did with with Dan Enos, but uh, oftentimes when a when a, when they don't retain a staff member, it, you know, you have to read about it th- kind of through back channels. Yeah, sometimes that happens, and I, it's hard to it's hard to envision the entire staff coming back. Um, obviously, there could be some, you know, on the defensive side, some guys have proven themselves again, and people could be coming for them. And then on the offensive side, you know, guys that their their units underperformed. You know, Cody Kennedy being the top top one there. So, um, and you know, poor Morgan Turner, he comes aboard one year, <laughs> and his top two players at the position get hurt. Yeah, so it's really hard to evaluate, uh, you know, what's happening with him. But, but yeah, um, you're still trying to keep your recruiting class together and all that. So quite often, staff um, movement occurs after signing day. So um, it just all depends on, you know, uh, when when guys are informed, how the players hear about it, and then how that comes out to uh, sources and to to the press. You know, you mentioned the tight end positions. We're talking with Tom Murphy on the McCarty Daniel hotline. They're going to push for Luke Has to make sure he's taken care of. Ty Washington, another name they'd like to have back. Tom, of the the upperclassmen, the guys that either have one plus year, maybe weighing their options with the next level. Who, who do you think is a player or a handful of players? Do you think they're really going to make a push to make sure they come back to Fayetteville this next season? Well, Sam Pittman's already stated it. Uh, with the transfer receivers, to, to want uh, Armstrong, Tesla, and Broden all back, because um, you know there there can be a high end with with Armstrong. I mean he he was clearly the best guy they had on you know this year. A lot of DBs um, that you'd want to have back. I mean you'd want to bring Snacks back and Jalen Braxton, and um, then of course you hope Quincy McAdoo. Uh, uh, recovers to the point he can play football. Um, I mean, I could go down the roster. I mean, the linebackers. You, you would you would have wanted Chris Paul back. Mm-hmm. Um, they he stated he wants Hudson Clark back as a plus one. Uh, so Bo Limber has already accepted an East West invitation. So that's probably tantamount to him uh, being gone. But you got Brady Latham in, on the offensive line. I mean, I know it wasn't the year he wanted. He had penalties and some. You know, he he was beaten on some plays. But man, he's a veteran, and um, you know he can help bring guys along, and I'm sure he can improve in another year too. So, but, I mean, there's a whole cast of guys you could go position by position and come up with guys you'd want to keep. Uh, Jacoby Criswell, Malachi Singleton, the list goes on and on. So, I think the rule that's changed with either the East West or the other Senior Bowl game is they can participate and still come back. No, I'm pretty sure about that, so we'll see about Limmer. But one of the questions, Tommy, you or Tom, you asked in the post game was about KJ Jefferson because, like I did, we saw his post before the game saying last game in Fayetteville or something to that nature. Did that give you a sense that Friday was his last game as the Arkansas quarterback? It, it certainly did, and I I just kind of had the feel all along that this was going to be KJ's final year. I mean, probably wanting to go pro, but now. He'll have to take that evaluation on where he might go. And certainly it wasn't a great year at improving his stock. I mean, although his talent, you know, he, he's shown what his talent can be. He's a great deep ball passer. He can avoid the rush. Um, adapting to the new scheme did not go so well. I mean, how much, you know, how much resistance did he put up to what the new scheme was going to be? How much on board was he? And, of course, there's all, you know, always the question about, what what did the NIL do to his um, you know willingness to you know be all in so to speak? And I mean he he gave it his all in the Florida game, and you know you could tell he was trying, but there seemed to be some kind of I don't know some kind of thing going on in the locker room, which you've heard about you know just whispers or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so my my feel is he has played his last game, but I I, I would not close that door necessarily, depending on. You know what what happens in the next few weeks, um, and I appreciate you informing me about Limmer because the way the rules are now they're constantly changing, and uh, it's good to hear because 
I think Bo Limmer is an asset for this team. Don't hold me that a hundred percent, but I'm I'm like ninety nine percent sure that's the <laughs> He's case. He's crawfishing, Tom. Yeah. He's backing up. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> well, no, I mean I'll look into it because they what, what have they what has the NCAA done in the last few years? Is make rules to better help athletes, and if if they can participate in a game like that and still play, I mean, what's the harm if that helps that game? It helps that player, and they can still get another year. So I, I will yeah. be checking into that. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V. BetOnline, where the game starts.